Oh, I think it's my time. <sighs> Okay, definitely should have stayed home today. What's going on? Welcome back to the vlog. This is my week in the life of a teacher uh, vlog, so where I talk about being a teacher. And so, um, this week I had to do something that, as teachers, we all dread. If you don't dread it, then then I want to know how not, and I, I want I need to learn from you. Preparing for a sub and, and being out a day this week, it wasn't because I was sick, I had a thing I had to do for my certification. Anyway, um, yeah, I prepared for a sub, kind of, and I failed miserably. So, basically what happened was, I had a sub on Tuesday, and I forgot to leave any like dismissal routine stuff, or any seating charts, everything was fine. Everything was fine, nobody got hurt, everyone was fine, but it just made me realize like how awful it is preparing for a sub and like, especially kindergarten, because it's not like, okay, I have a friend, Mr. P. I like turtles. Teaches fourth grade. He can say, all right, they can work on their projects, do your paper, watch this video, because it's like 40 minute blocks, right? You can do one or two things, but in kindergarten, it's 10 minute act, the day is, a kindergarten day is basically filled up with 110 minute activities, like, at a time, right? Like, you, you have to do this, then this, then that, you can't just say, we're gonna do this for 30 minutes, it's very hard. So, yeah, it was pretty much a nightmare doing that, but it, it is what, it was what it was, and I probably, the reason why I didn't stay home today, and I probably should have, I, I just need to rest, but, because I didn't want to do that again, go through that again, especially on a Friday, to the, the anxiety that I would have all weekend, not knowing what went on in my room on Friday, and, and like running in my mind what my room is gonna look like when I return. And, and the only reason I say that is not because um, of anything the sub would or wouldn't do, it's I am such a stickler for how my classroom needs to look, and if I showed up Monday morning and things are out of place, and, and oh man, it would just mess me up. So, anyway, I went into work, and today was okay, but, uh, you know, it's one of those, it's just one of those things where, you know, you're, you're darned if you do, you're darned if you don't. Um, so, anyway, um, that, that was kind of the, the theme of this week, was sick, being sick, kind of, not sick enough to stay home and kind of till today, which I probably should have, have a crazy cough. But, um, so, so I definitely need to take my own advice more, seriously. So one of my goals uh, this weekend is to take some time and to have a generic sub plan. And I, I kind of did that for Tuesday, but I need to make it better and more specific and something that I'm more comfortable with. And that way I'm more prepared to be out on a, a mo moment's notice. Especially with Kristen and I, you know, we're getting ready, we're having a baby in May, so stuff like that, having appointments and stuff last minute or whatever, and even when we get into May, I'm gonna need to be able to just be like, all right, can't go to work today, and, and have that, um, you know, because obviously the baby's important, so, um, but I just, I think maybe, and I'm not trying to brag, but I think maybe I've missed, this is my sixth year teaching, and I think I've been out for a full day three times. So, I'm not, I don't have a lot of experience doing sub plans or being out and I still get really anxious with it. Um, and I just got really, I've just been really lucky with, with, with health, like not getting really sick or I obviously don't have kids yet so I haven't had to take any time off for anything like that. I suspect I will, uh, you know, once the baby arrives. Um, but I've been, I've been very blessed up to this point to not have to use very many sick days. Anyway, um, I'm not gonna do a lot of moving in this vlog. I need to, I think I might be dead actually. I might be a ghost <coughs> talking to you right now. But anyways, um, I did wanna talk about something that has been on my mind lately, especially this time of year. Student engagement, and so like recognizing when misbehavior comes from not being engaged. Someone commented literally this morning on a video. And I think it was the video where I was 
com I was complaining about being in that that uh, work day for my uh, certification, and they said, oh, so basically you had to sit like you had to sit there like a student all day, and I was like, oh, they, they were saying it tongue in cheek, but it got me thinking, oh snap, yeah, so I sit, you know I had to sit there and do work, and it's like man. I don't want to ever have my students feel this way. And I do a lot of movement activities in my classroom. Like I said, I do a lot of 10 minute activities where we're switching, we're moving, um, we, I keep it moving. And I try to keep it up high energy and stuff. And, um, but it got me thinking. When I was not engaged, obviously I wasn't misbehaving or being disruptive, but I wasn't engaged. I was like sitting there and sitting there and thinking and on my phone. And it was like, it was my personal work time to get my job done, but I had like, I just wasn't in it, right? And it made me think like some of the misbehavior that I'm having, and I've got most of my misbehavior at this point of the year under under control, but some of the misbehaviors that are popping up, how much of it has to do with not being engaged? And what I mean is student A, right, does their work. I give them 10 minutes to do something. It takes them seven or six. Then they are now done. They're gonna fill that time with, you know, if you don't have them do something, they're gonna, if you don't have something for the kids to do, they're gonna fill it. And most times, eight or nine out of 10 times, kids are gonna fill it in a way you don't want them to. Whether that's talking to their neighbors or getting other, trying to get other seats or just general tomfoolery. That's what kids will usually gravitate towards. Very rarely is a kid gonna finish early and say, I'm gonna use this time to work on my metacognition and think about my thinking. I'm gonna try to better myself. What could I do right now? That's never gonna happen, I'm sorry. But, uh, so, anyway, um, having activities, not just for early finishers, but this is a time of year where a lot of my activities, my students have done multiple times. <coughs> oh, please. And um, they're, getting, they're getting easier. So upping the rigor, but keeping the engagement up. And that's something that I'm gonna have to go to work on. I only have one full week next week and before Christmas break, then I have like two short days, a day and then a short day. <coughs> oh, my heart. And, uh, it, it's it's a thing where I have to make sure that they're not only engaged during the time that they're supposed to be working, but engaged when I'm teaching, engaged when they're working on their own, and then engaged after. Always having go-to activities. My thing is copying stuff on half the paper, and have, they can turn a picture over, turn the paper over, and it's the easiest go-to in the world. Draw a picture on the back. The problem that I run into is kid A finishes, has three minutes to write a picture on the back, starts a picture, doesn't finish gets mad when they don't get to finish the picture. And me as the adult, I'm going, well, the activity is not about the picture, so how can you possibly be mad? But then I go back and think about it. If I was working on something, and someone's like, nope, put it away, you're done. Uh, you know, I, I can see how I can get upset. Now I have a timer and I do reminders, but still, you know, so I'm gonna start moving away from that and having a more purposeful task. Okay, when you get done with this math worksheet, I would like you on the back. I want to see how high you can write your numbers before the timer goes off. One, two, three, how high can you write to? Purposeful activities, that way it's not, I was working on drawing the spaceship and now it's not done, now I'm mad and I'm gonna throw a fit. That's very appropriate behavior for a kindergartner when you're upset. So I'm gonna start moving towards more purposeful activities for early finishers. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, so <laughs> I think it's one of those deals where um, it's always just always being cognizant of what I'm doing. And, and, and I, it's like today I'm like, gosh, a little bit rocky today. One, I wasn't feeling my best, so it's hard for me to be at my A game when I'm not feeling the best. And two, I've got some kids that are not engaged. Um, you know, so obviously if you're a kid or if you're... <laughs> If you're an adult and you're not engaged, what are you gonna do? You're gonna be on your phone, you're gonna be talking, you're gonna be whatever, right? Ha engaging all the time. So um, be thinking about that this week when you're planning your lessons. How often are your kids not engaged? Or, or is the misbehavior that you're seeing due to not being engaged? Is something too easy, too hard? It's, it, as a teacher, that's one of the things that I forget to do. You know, I look at other things. We look at the big picture stuff or the, the things like something's going on, this, you know, this child's all of a sudden acting up. Must be something going wrong at home. Is there a change? Or it could just be they're not engaged. So I had to do some work on that this weekend um, during my planning time on Sunday where I sort of dive into that and answer some questions like that and pick uh, picture it student by student. Why are they misbehaving, do I think? Oh, I bet you it's because, you know, going through that in my own mind is part of my planning process. Um, I'd say most of my planning actually has to do with um, 
management of the classroom. Uh, how will this lesson affect everybody? How can, you know, it's it's not just about the content that I'm teaching, it's it's other things as well. It's, it's the minutiae of teaching, if you will, that go into it, like, how will this kid deal with have this type of activity or um, will this work for that group, that kind of stuff. It's, you know, teaching's hard, right? I don't know, I'm preaching to the choir right now, but anyway, take care of yourself as I am going to. Drink some life juice, eat some fruits, and uh, have a great weekend. I know I'm gonna be just resting all weekend. Rest, 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 water, 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 fruit, fruit, fruit. Um, and uh, yeah, so I hope you had a great week. Let me know down below. Next week, I'm hoping to be better uh, as far as um, not being sick. Hopefully I get better this weekend. And I would like to show you more of the classroom, what I'm doing, so um, especially it'll be like, well, it'll be Christmas break coming up, so it'll be a while before I do a teacher in the classroom. So what do you want me to show you before break? Um, lesson planning, I know people want, I've been interested in lesson planning stuff. Uh, what about else would you like to see in the classroom while I'm still in the classroom because next week I can film stuff in the classroom and get it ready to go for other videos. If you're interested in certain aspects of my classroom, um, let me know so I can start filming that. You can just drop it in the comments down below. But anyways, thanks for watching. Find your gift, share it with the world, and remember, you are worth it. See you tomorrow.